Everything starts to break, and I was lucky enough to be doing Trans Europe Express live here on Talk Sport, um, a program about European football at the very moment that European football's history was being turned upside down, like somebody changing the bed. Um, we managed to get, keep the coverage of that going live. Um, the re responses, the, it, you know, both from fans and the press, have been mostly unanimous and predictably angry. Let me just give you some of the headlines. Football at war. Uh, English games giants sign up to join the new European Super League. Furious Premier League won't sanction a move. So shameless six must back down or break away. That was the back page of the Daily Mail today. We'll ban you. Martin Lipton, the son, threatening um, that UEFA will threaten uh, the rebels as they plunge the game into chaos. Rebel clubs face expulsion over breakaway. Jeremy Wilson's take in the Daily Telegraph. Beautiful games, ugly war. John Cross in the Daily Mirror's headline. And I suppose um, I could have picked any one of these pieces. Dave Kidd's piece in today's Sun um, summed it up with the following paragraph. Under the cover of the pandemic, they made their move. The owners of England's big six, three American sports moguls, two oil barons and a Bahamas-based billionaire have made the cowardly move of signing up for a breakaway European Super League. This was always the end game for the Glazers at Manchester United, John Henry's Fenway Sports Group and Stan Kroenke of Arsenal, all owners of American sports clubs and their franchise model. Guaranteed top dollar without the need for sporting excellence is the American sporting dream. Simon so Jordan, we've talked about this a lot, you and I, over the past two years. That we how did indeed. A convergence of financial necessity, yep. technological change, cultural change around the world um, would lead to some shifting in the way football was going to be organised. Yep. Um, I'll ask you, first of all, why now? And is this a plan that has got a chance of working? Why now? I think the crisis that COVID-19 has wreaked havoc amongst the top 12 clubs in Europe. If you look at the 1920 accounts before COVID-19 bit, they lost 1.2 billion. I think they'll probably lose twice that this year. I think the opportunity for the Sky deal being rene re renegotiated in a year's time gives them a timing exercise as well. I think they've looked at the interest of private equity firms that have just bought 10% of FSG and the private equity firms that were trying to buy into the Football League to be able to buy the media rights from that. They've got JP Morgan in play. JP Morgan can fund this and can raise the capital to be able to do it. They've got the broadcasting thought process. They've got the will. They've got the way. The owners of these clubs don't really care about the sport in this country. Cronky doesn't probably even know what football is. He knows it's an opportunity to make money. And there is a real opportunity here for the idea that I talked about with you for the Netflix of football being the Netflix of, of football with the biggest clubs in the world or the biggest clubs in Europe behind it and the vehicle that's been used is to great offence to all of us that hold the pyramid and the sanctity of meritocracy and promotion through achievement and recognition through the attainment of consistent achievement is the vehicle that they're trying to deploy. So it's not a case of if, it's a case of when in my view. And if, if, if you want to understand what the other 14 clubs in the Premier League are doing now and thinking, they'll be thinking one of three things. How do I stop it? How do I change it? Or how do I become part of it? Yeah. OK, listen, thank you very much. Here on Talk Sport, I've been listening all day. We've had callers after caller um, and pundits and um, people from inside and outside the game uh, lamenting. Sean, um, in, in, inside a newspaper, is it possible to judge the temperature of this thing? And do you think that the big six have misjudged the reaction to this thing? Or did they always know it's going to be like this and discounted it anyway? Well, they actually <clears throat> expected it. I, they, they're not surprised by the reaction at all. And nor do they care about the reaction as far as that can work out. Certainly from the American owner's side. Um, they just believe relegations in, in the possibility of relegation is an inconvenience to to the business. They don't want to see that anymore. They want to preserve the fact that they'll always be in the top league, that there'll never be any danger because it's better for their business model. But the mute, mood music, I mean, it's easy to read. I was out with some mates yesterday afternoon. There was a few rumours around about this was gonna this was gonna break. Then when it was on TV, everybody who was watching watching uh, Super League bound Arsenal on the TV was just devastated they just that's it i've had enough that really is that really is the end for me and this is a team that's going to be in it they don't want it no fans want it but I, I'm, I'm not telling you anything you don't know there but no. I, i've yet to hear a football fan or a major football person um who loves football come out and say this is a great idea 